Good afternoon, good day, wherever you are. Welcome to the Flying Dutchman podcast, all things aviation, most things military. And on today's episode, I'm very happy to announce that we have Major Chris Johnson from the Civil Air Patrol. And we're going to learn a little bit about Mr. Johnson. We're going to learn about his aviation experience and especially learn about Civil Air Patrol because I didn't know some of these wonderful opportunities in the Civil Air Patrol, especially for young adults. Chris, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, good to be on your show. Thanks for inviting me. Um, it's uh, It's been, what, a few months since we first talked at the uh, Solar Museum uh, Open Cockpit Day. Great place to go, by the way. If you're interested in aviation, I, I plug them any day. So really enjoy going and wandering around and looking at the different uh, displays they have there. Um, anyway, a little bit about myself. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in California uh, as a teenager we moved to uh, British Columbia uh, why British Columbia my parents had were Canadians and so consequently went back there for some opportunities and back stateside and then back to Alberta so I spent about 18 years in the province of Alberta before moving back to California in the early 2000s um I um, got my love of aviation uh basically from my dad he used to have, when I was a kid, I uh, used to have a boss that was into aviation. He had some really great aircraft, Blanca 300, which is a fast aircraft, 300 horsepower, low wing. And we used to do some training with uh, a boss's kid, myself in the back seat and, and do some high performance training. And it was just, it was so much fun. Well, it was one of those things I always kind of put in my bucket list to, uh, to do someday and Oh, that one had to wait a while, but uh, back in, uh, let's see, it took me until I was almost 50 years old to get that aviation bug uh, uh -huh. taken care of. So <laughs> got my private pilot's license just about the time I turned 50. So where, where did you get that private pilot license at? That was in Santa Barbara. Uh, oh. So I did Santa Barbara for the for my VFR, and then I did an add-on a few years later for instrument rating. So I'm mm -hmm. an instrument rated pilot. And um, the uh, so the interesting thing is, you know, we talk, we're talking about Civil Air Patrol today mm -hmm. and I um, kind of backing up a little in time. I uh, my kids got involved with Royal Canadian Air Cadets in Canada mm -hmm. and it was a long drive to get them to a squadron. And I opened my mouth one day and said, hey, is there something I can do to help? Next thing you know, there's an application for him and became an officer there in the Canadian forces, because, you know, they can't fill it, find a Canadian to fill it. They'll take, you know, me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, it was, a, it was a great program there. Well, one time we came down to uh, Santa Barbara to visit my dad and he says, Hey, let's go to Vandenberg for a uh, uh, air show. I said, Oh yeah, let's go see an air show. So get there. And I see all these kids running around in BDUs at the time. Uh, and I go, wow, what's this? It looks like cadets. So I went over and to their booth. Uh, they were doing some recruiting and learned all about Civil Air Patrol. So that was my first exposure uh, to uh -huh. Civil Air Patrol. Uh, went back home, uh, like I said, back here in the 2000s and got my pilot's license. Then it was kind of like one of these things where you go like, now what do I do with it? Well, a month later, I was into Civil Air Patrol. So they happened to be a couple doors down from the flight school. And uh, so it's been 16 years of uh, wow. that. So, yeah. What um, what rank did you start at when you joined the Civil Air Patrol? Um, basically, your uh, your initial contact is a senior member. Okay. And then you there's some training to do and time in. Uh, then you become a second lieutenant after about six months, assuming you do your training. Mm -hmm. And then there's varying time spans between uh, your different uh, promotions. So... And now I hold the rank of major. Um, my boss says, you know, you should promote. And I go, eh, it's a lot of hours to get to that next level. And I could probably spend the time doing something, <laughs> doing yeah. something else with those that same hours, volunteer hours. So. Right, right. But um, now, being a private pilot uh, with the certificates that you have enables you to, do you guys have any aircraft assigned to your Civil Air Patrol unit? So Civil Air Patrol, of course, is a national organization and maybe a little bit of history for your viewers. Uh, the first Please. initial um, conversations, I guess, in the organization for Civil Air Patrol before it was called that was in 1938 with Gil Rob Wilson. 
him and a few friends, you know, they were, they were, the war in in uh, Europe was was heating up, and they could see that potentially there was a need. And, and so, you know, lobbying and organizing private pilots, private aircraft, um, they finally got uh, Congress or the president to sign off on forming civil air patrol under the Army Air Force. Mm-hmm. So um, they were initially um, kind of standalone, I guess, part of civil defense. And they uh, that happened uh, 1st of December, 1941. Well, we know what happened on December 7th. Wow. And so consequently, uh, Civil Air P- Patrol uh, geared up. Um, they were tasked with, with um, coastal patrols looking for U-boats. Uh, they were tasked with southern and north, well, southern border uh, observation they um had a cadet program to 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 train matter of fact that was pretty interesting they initially go well we need pilots so civil air patrol stood up and said hey we'll we'll get a program going so their initial um initial group was of applicants was around two hundred thousand. so a lot of young people they had to be between the ages of 15 and 17 and uh, they, the Air, Army Air Force gave them a two hundred dollar budget, and they trained all these pilots. So, big volunteer organization. That's a pretty big tasking, you know. And uh, they were successful at that. And they've done some, of course, search and rescue. They they would uh, patrol for uh, um, ships that had been uh, damaged at sea, um, and of course the the U boats. And uh, so they at one point in time were equipped with small bombs. And there was actually some success in that area of uh, of uh, damaging or sinking U-boats. So not bad for a bunch of volunteers. And I think if I remember correctly, about 70 Civil Air Patrol members lost their lives in the, in the line of duty during World War II. Wow. I had no idea. I, yeah. Yeah. I, pretty I, cool I was, organization. It, it's a very cool organization. And I was vaguely aware about a U-boat that were indeed by Civil Air Patrol. They were... Uh, it's not like they were flying TBD Avengers or or they were they were hanging bombs off of uh, civilian aircraft. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with the types of aircraft they were using in the, but a lot of those that's... names of those aircraft are not around anymore. So uh, yeah. you know, uh, but it was interesting, you know, that most of the small aircraft could only put a hundred pound bomb on there. So that tells you they're probably something like a Cessna 140 size, or the payload uh-huh. pretty limited. Uh, there were some bigger ones. There were lo- the larger aircraft. They could put a 300-pound um, depth charge on them. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, it, it varied. But remember, this was all civilian aircraft. Today, right. um, back to your question about assigned to a squadron, um, Civil Air Patrol has around 560 aircraft in its fleet across the U.S. And uh, Alaska, Hawaii have some Puerto Rico. So, um you know, there's a lot of aircraft. Right now, Civil Air Patrol in California, if I remember correctly, we're getting a new one at the end of this month, a Cessna 172. And it's, uh, I think we're up to around 26 aircraft spread out throughout California. And mm-hmm. you know, it's so the squad in, in, that I am was working with in Mariposa, no, we don't have an aircraft. You can imagine we've got something like 70 or 80 squadrons, but only, you know, Two dozen aircraft to spread around. So, so it's a, in it's a asset. So, in the event that you guys are needed because an aircraft is missing in the Sierras, because uh, Mariposa is west of the Sierras, so um, you guys would use somebody that that owns their own aircraft and they belong to the squadron, and that's how that would be conducted. Or no, basically. You know, um, we fly a host of different aircraft. So we fly 172s, which are um, kind of aimed at more on flight training and cadet orientation rides. However, they are mission capable to do missions, uh-huh. uh, uh, search and rescue, uh, uh, aerial photography, etc. Then we fly a uh, naturally aspirated 182s. Uh, we've got some turbo 18. We have a turbo 182. We have some turbo. Ooh. 206s, we have some naturally aspirated uh, 206s. So, and they're spread out kind of strategically okay. around the state. So, if something were to happen, uh, we did one here uh, not terribly long ago out in Bishop. And um, so, we were, we brought that aircraft from uh, the Bay Area. So, 
I mean, flying time is flying time. You know, we can get an aircraft to most anywhere within probably an hour to two I, hours. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. If I were at an airport and there was a civil air patrol aircraft at that airport, how would I know it's a civil air patrol aircraft? Well, I wish I could show you a picture. I don't have it, but they're pretty I, distinct. Uh, I'll, I'll have to get one for you, but uh, they're very distinct in color. The red, white, and blue got big civil air patrol uh, air force and, and air force emblems on them. It say civil uh, air patrol on them. There's no missing those. Anytime that those okay. fly into an airport, people know who, who we are. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and right. what, what are the age groups that can come into the civil air patrol? Okay. Um, I'm going to peel that one apart a little bit. So sure. civil air patrol has three uh, congressionally mandated missions that we do. Uh -huh. One is emergency services. Okay. So we do, um, of course, some search and rescue, um, a lot of photography last year. At this time, we had all that rain. Civil Air Patrol was involved. Hillary, we, um, when we when that flooding came up and we did some work for FEMA, uh, we are a federal asset. So, you know, agencies can request us. Uh, so we, um, so we do a lot of different things. So, uh, that's uh, then we have aerospace education, uh, teaching young people about aerospace, uh, um, going into classrooms. There's a that's a pretty broad base. Then we have our cadet program. Cadet programs uh, is a pretty big organization. It makes up about half the membership, uh, especially here in California, and that is growing leaps and bounds um, since COVID. I think we're well above our COVID pre-COVID numbers now. Uh, but it's it's really one of those things that has a lot to offer for for cadets. So age wise, cadets can join at twelve years old. Oh. Uh, depending on as you move up through the the program as an adult, you can join uh, at eighteen as an adult mm -hmm. and go until you're ninety nine or whenever you decide to retire, you can join too. Also, so That's so fantastic. happy to take you. You know, one of the things that. Uh, I really like to do when we're when we're looking at um, somebody who wishes to join is like it's a two way street. Uh, Civil Air Patrol has a lot to offer, but we also want to know what you're bringing to us, and as as a result, what you're bringing to your community. Very community organized, or start that again. We're very community minded, so mm -hmm. one of the things we want to make sure we do is uh, make sure that it's a good fit, not only for Civil Air Patrol, but for you as an individual, and we help you achieve whatever goals you might might have. That's pretty good. And that's uh, for whatever goals they might have. And for some people, they might not have that background structure to set a goal of, and achieve that goal. Um, I think the Civil Air Patrol, for any young people out there that, that have even an inkling of passion for aviation, or community service because you, you guys do stuff on the ground as well not so much in there either but helping out on the ground it might even be looking for somebody or something I don't oh, know, for sure but yeah, yeah. the yeah. um yeah we like as for ground searching uh we can definitely incorporate cadets into that we'll just call mm -hmm. them that age range of um, 12 through 21 you age out at 21 mm -hmm. um but there's there's a lot of things okay back to COVID, for instance uh, Civil Air Patrol uh, handed out short, just short of two million meals during COVID, wow. um, and a lot of cadet participation. In that so community service is a big thing. Leadership's a big thing. Respect's a big thing. And we're going to teach young people, and you know sometimes us older people need a little tuning up once in a while too. So we learn a little bit of that, a little bit of discipline. So it's all good. Uh, and how how many are in yours? What what squadron are you in? Right now, I took a job change, so I am now at the wing level. I'm wing staff, senior staff, uh, but Mariposa is what we started last year as a brand new squadron in Mariposa. Oh. They are sitting around 22 or 24, I guess, uh -huh. for membership right now, so I kind of had to move along a little bit when I was asked to do this new job. So uh, mm -hmm. my new job is... Uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, and I'm responsible for aerospace education, uh, operations, logistics, communication. So that all um, comes underneath my purview now. So just a different job, but I tell you, the challenges are different and they're a lot of fun. So I'm yeah. really enjoying the, the change as far as uh, the new challenges. And, and do you still get to work with the youth in that capacity? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so what I do in, in uh, you know, Mariposa is as needed, I can go and assist over there. But part of what my commander, the wing commander, has uh, asked um, the senior staff to do is to get out more. Um, you know, it's like any organization um, that, some you know, who's the CEO? Who's the CFO? You know, you never see these people if you're in a yeah. large organization, right? So his, his vision is that we – more senior staff get out into the field and and listen to what members have to say and uh you know it's a it's been interesting i've done a couple of those so far and more are in works uh, but it's really interesting to do that because the participation in your conversations is incredible people are surprised you're there that you would take the time and come and and uh see the membership at the yeah. street level and or, or airport level as the case may be and uh you know, it's just, it's a good, it's good. Get the communication going, build the strength. You know, if we're all, we're all one big team, one family. Yeah. And well, so, yeah. What are you hearing? What I'm hearing is, well, there's the usual stuff. I'd like to get an airplane, right? Well, there's only so <laughs> many of those, you know, at, uh, I don't know what they cost now, 600,000, 700,000, because they're nice airplanes. Uh, glass cockpit, G1000 uh, aircraft. Yeah. Uh, but if you're joining Civil Air Patrol to uh, just to fly, you're going to be sorely uh, disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's your motivation, I've had a few conversations where that's all the only way that the conversation went. And they go, you know, you're probably going to be disappointed. Maybe this isn't for you. So, you know, it's 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 bigger than just flying. But uh, yes. the opportunities are there for sure. Uh -huh. uh, two years ago, I think is the latest statistics I had have. So, um 2022 fiscal year, uh, California flew about 7,000 hours in excess of 7,000 hours in small planes. Uh, a lot of sorties, a lot of missions, and uh, but a lot of flight hours. A chunk of time, big chunk of time at that time for 26 aircraft. So, yeah, yeah, but oh, uh, wow. yeah, it, so it varies from year to year, but that happened to be it, an unusually busy year. And so. uh, some of those young adults have gone on to go into some of the services, not just the Air Force, but uh, uh, drone operators, not just flying, but uh, intelligence. And, and um, it's such a good background. What you mentioned that your 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 sons were with the Canadian. Uh, what was their counterpart up in Canada? Oh, so my, I have a son and a daughter, and uh, they both joined the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. Uh, great program in Canada, uh, similar in scope or nature to uh, what we do with cadets here. In a lot of ways, some areas are, are quite odd, opposite. Uh, we have a much better flying program. They have a really good uh, uh, ground, like, what would you call it? Pause here. Um, air crew uh, training. So uh, if you're, you crash, you know, I can't, what's the word, it's Dutch. Um, so air crew, they have a real good air crew survival program up there. Oh, okay. So we don't kind of do so much of that kind of here. We do do some off off highway, what I call stuff. But uh, so each had is, has a strength. Um, but the that's where I kind of got my start. And the kids got their start in that. And then my son's gone on to become a flight nurse today. And my daughter's a teacher. So the one thing about these programs like Civil Air Patrol, or where you're learning leadership, you're how to serve your community, um, how to be respectful, um, have ethics, you know, though all those good character building things, that's what you're going to learn in Civil Air Patrol as a cadet, yeah. you know, yeah. some discipline. And you don't have to go in the military. Uh, but, you know, if I show up at Kaiser, for instance, and I want a job and I'm timely, you know, I show up on time and I apply for my job and I'm, re I'm respectful and I'm hold myself well, you're going to be looked at differently. Yes, you will. Who sloppily walks in the door. Yeah. So it's a, it's a life skill set that you're learning. Uh, yes, some will go into the military. There's no obligation to do that. Um, but it's it's a life skill set yeah. that you're learning. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, but that there's no obligation to go in the military. And those are important life skills. Um and, and for people to be aware, I, I, when you do go for a job, it, and your social media uh, content also is, is looked at. And you you mentioned uh, getting out in the field, meeting with the, I'll, I'll say the truth. Uh, you recently had a field trip. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That I want to. Cool yeah, I want to. <laughs> I want. I want to know about this. I want to know about this field. I wish I could have gone. Where'd you go? What'd you do? Okay. Well, Beale Air Force Base, Ooh. and it was a cadet, uh, basically a cadet event. It was a uh, what would you call it? it um, a career day, and so they had uh, the public affairs officers there had everything lined up. The lieutenant colonel that uh, is responsible for that area actually had toured with us the whole day, really? which was really really great. Um, I know personally when I drove in in the morning, I'm going like, what is that aircraft flying around up there? And here it's a U-2 because that's their training base. Um, so I go, I, I had to stop because that's the first time I'd ever seen one actually flying. I've always seen them on the ground in static display, but never seen one in a pattern. And so I had to get out and take some photos of that one. But uh, so they took us through all the, you know, how the pilots dress, you know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a space suit. And then, um, you know, took us to the tower, showed us that, took us up to the U-2 and T-38s that they fly, showed us around those, spent a little time there, fed us, went over to the KC-135 tanker, got to see all that, uh, went over to the EOD uh, shop, and they went through all our equipment, their little robots and everything for, for explosives. And then the cool, really cool thing is we ended the day with the dogs. And so the, the K-9 unit that they have there, uh, they put on a little demonstration for us and uh, just, a, just a wonderful, wonderful day. And I, I know I was talking with my one of my counterparts and their local squad, and they're still talking about it two or three weeks later. Are so they? it really made a, a significant uh, significant impact on some lives there, you know, how to be part of that team. So. Yeah, yeah. And you got to see the U-2? Got to see the U-2. Yeah, wow. she's an old girl, but, uh, you know, they still fly those things and uh, their crews are really proud of what they do for the country. And so am I. I mean, yeah. it's, I really appreciate their service. Uh, you know, they're high flying aircraft that, uh, you know, it's a long flight. You, you know, some of those flights, I don't know, half a day long, you know, so Easy, yeah. that's a long time to sit in in one spot and oh, uh, you know. dinner through a tube. <laughs> yeah, they did show us that. They go like, did they? Yummy. <laughs> did, oh, did they let you guys try some of it? They they sent some along with us, and uh, that went with the cadets. I was in a, a support vehicle at the time, and it's like, I really want to taste and see what that's like. So, for me, I don't know. I, I got to move once in a while. You know, I, I'm yeah. sure the person that flies those things has to be pretty oh. cool under those cramped conditions for long periods of time and, they uh, do i i have a prospective uh u2 pilot that will be on the show he doesn't fly them no longer he's gone on to the war college and uh, oh, yeah. Job, but, yeah and there'll be some things that we don't talk about but um just for a person such as myself that's claustrophobic i i couldn't imagine sitting in and like that in that student stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I uh, I agree with you. It's like I when I drive somewhere, I got to stop once in a while and get out, stretch my legs. So can't exactly do that with a U two. <laughs> no, no. But this is an, an example. That road trip to Buell is getting out in the field and what and taking these these folks out and and experience something like that. So that's yeah. that, that's very good. Well, um, it, it came about, um, I think it was in December or something like that. I got this message saying, hey, we're, we're going to put together this. And it happens to be a trial. Uh, so it's an initial uh, event that they're looking at, if, you know, doing some more of. But this was an initiative from uh, national headquarters. And the gentleman there that uh, put it all together has been really great. Really excited about doing this more for cadets. And it is a, it is aimed at cadets. So, yeah. uh we just have a few chaperones that go along. And the one thing I really have to say, and I'm going to kind of toot my own horn and not my go first, for it. but the, but the civil air patrol, when we went on this, there's about 50 cadets and talk about professional, um, well-minded, really good young people. You know, they didn't do what they weren't supposed to do. And they did what they were supposed to do and were respectful. And it's just, when you sit back and you get to or stand back, I should say, and you look at that, you go, I can see the program at work, you know, and that was the feedback we got from Beal also was how respectful and, and, and uh, disciplined the cadets were. They had a great time, you know, kids, you know, yes. get a little excited about something, but still, you know, it's just like, so it was a good balance. They did a great job and uh, uh -huh. 
good, good. Um, have some kudos to their their trainers over the years that have done a fantastic job with them. Yeah, very good, very good. And I'm sure some of the feedback you're going to get from them when you're out in the field talking to them. Yeah. How, yeah. how big is your territory of responsibility? My area of responsibility is California. So, Ooh. yeah, so at, um, looking forward to uh, a couple of weeks from now, going to be heading down to uh, Southern California and visit. Uh, we have eight groups that California is divided up into. Central Valley here is group six. So um, th there's no rhyme or reason which group number goes where, but uh, we're going to be heading down south. And I'm going to be traveling with our diversity officer. Uh huh. Um, she's got a passion for diversity and when we talk about diversity a bit, we tend to think numbers, you know, what, what is my skin color? You know, what's my orientation? All these kinds of things. She has a little different vision. And we talked a little bit before the show about uh, underserved community. Her passion yes. is getting civil air patrol into underserved communities. What does underserved mean? Just means we don't have a presence there. You know, not, no, nothing more, nothing less. We just don't have a presence there. Uh -huh. so how can we bring that opportunity of civil air patrol to a small community? Example of that has been Mariposa. There's a couple other ones in the works. Uh, so her her passion, her love, her goal is to build that that um, uh, squadron out in the middle of nowhere yeah. where we can support it. So um, National has has uh, done the same has the same mindset. Uh -huh. So you know I can see more and more civil air patrol squadrons taking it to where people are. Uh, the program and it's it's a big job you got to find the right person to spearhead the project you do uh, it uh, it takes a lot of work but the payoff is incredible you know that's payday for us volunteers when you see something successful exactly exactly and i i people that might not live in california i think sometimes they have a vision of what california is and um california is like 90 percent rural it's 80 percent rural it's agriculture it's you could drive where I'm at north of here for an hour and a half and now, you know, and you're just hitting these little pocket towns. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, to have somebody out there, some young kid that, that every time a plane flies over, he looks up or whenever a, a train goes by with vehicles on it, he watches it. And to have something like the Civil Air Patrol suddenly available to them. And for that single mom who's trying, who's got the, their child that, need just a little structure that's what they want and what a great thing to drive them there and say here's what something you can do and and advance the clock and that person comes back and now they want to infect the others they're now an adult they want to volunteer because it's very contagious and, oh, yeah. and, and it can be generational well it's, it's it's sorry no it's really, it's it's really interesting. Uh, you mentioned, you know, have them come back as adults. Um, you know, I've been in this long enough, 16 years, that, well, that's a lifetime for a young person. So gone from being a 12-year-old to a 28-year-old, um, you know, that's the span of uh, a few years. And it's really interesting to see or maybe talk to or whatever that young person uh, these this many years later. And it's it's really fascinating to see what what uh, some cadets have gone on to do. Um, in Canada, uh, I'll start with that one. Um, my kids got interested in, in Royal Canadian Air Cadets because of a client I was doing some work for, and their two boys were in it. And they had their, their life goals mapped out at, at 14 years old, or they're about 12, 14 and 16. They were, they were gonna finish up Civil Air Patrol, get a full ride uh, scholarship to Royal Military College, go on to fly F-18 fighters for the Canadian Forces and retire at age 40. I mean, that was their, they say, okay, sure. Well, so followed their career over, over this 20 odd years and uh, they both did exactly that. One ended up going to the University of Alberta, but one went to Royal Military College. The one, uh, the older brother is now in the space program for Canada. So it's pretty cool to see, you know, what you can be. Here, uh, I've seen the same thing. You know, I've seen uh, cadets go on to fly jets, fly, and that's all, all uh, uh, elements of the force from from uh, Coast Guard through Navy, Air Force, Marines, Army. Um, there's one now flying uh, Chinooks. I mean, it's just it's it's amazing what you can do with the basis. It's just the basis. And I've also had some go on to be pastors. You know, pastors of a church. So it, it that skill set you learn 
we'll take you through anything. Yeah, yeah, will and, and and those skill sets are what successful people carry with them. Yeah, whatever they do. Yeah, yeah, really leading people to Christ or sling loading a Humvee under your Chinook. Yeah, that, there's a need, there's a need for it all. There yeah. really is. There really is. And in this day and age, where everybody's looking at their phone and walking into walls, it's refreshing when you have somebody that looks you in the eyeball and you know, has been doing formation drills and. Or it says, or says sir. Yeah. Oh. So it says, sir or ma'am, you know. And there's other organizations, you know, Boy Scouts are another one that's great mm -hmm. for learning that kind of stuff, Girl Scouts. Those kinds of um, organizations, you know, each one has a unique um, skill set, that, but their basic skill sets are the same. You might learn a little something different. But, uh, yeah. you know, Civil Air Patrol has its thing that, that we can bring to the table other than the basics. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy and proud to be part of the organization. Uh, a lot of hours go into it. They're not paid yeah. out. Uh, luckily they cover some of the fuel and stuff once in a while. And, uh -huh. but it's just one of those things that brings joy to my heart. You know, it's, mm -hmm. if it's, and if it brings joy to your heart, why not do it? Exactly. Yeah. Anything that you like is not work. Yeah. It is work, but no. <laughs> and, uh, I have a, uh, uh, my YouTube uh, channel is I like to do road shows and, and highlight things. And I'll be at the uh, Travis Air Force Base Air Show. And hopefully there'll be a Civil Air Patrol unit there because I, I learned what I've learned talking with you both on and off the show. Um, I, I'd really like to talk to some of these young adults and, and have it, them share with me their story. For sure. Yeah. Uh, there is a squadron right on Travis. There is. Uh, so I'm sure they'll be there recruiting. Uh, I probably just have to find them what corner they're in, and uh, but I'll look for the blue and white with the red striped airplane. There you go. <laughs> that is it. Yeah, that is it. Is there is there a a time limit of your volunteer? Can you you said I think you said earlier you could volunteer doing this till you're ninety if you wanted to. Right. Um, you know, we've got some members probably in our. I'm trying to think how old our oldest member is. How old is she? I don't think she wants. I won't say <laughs> she's been around a day. Or, she's been around a day or two. Uh, that's good for her. Those. And, uh, you know, it's basically uh, this one lady I'm thinking of. She has a passion uh, for Civil Air Patrol and wherever she can, you know, uh, get to and do, she does. Uh -huh. And it kind of brings me to to maybe backing up a touch with that. Um, sure. Civil Air Patrol is open to everybody. I mean, if you're, you know, physically impaired somehow, you know, well, then we'll figure something out. You know, uh -huh. so like it, may not, it may not be something that that we can do and there may be some limits but there's some other job you can do uh -huh. so it's, it's open to anybody that wants to join yeah uh, discriminate on any of that stuff uh, best thing is just to next time you're doing air show or that's a really good place because you'll probably find a recruiting booth there for civil air patrol go up and talk have the conversation you know and and if you're <clears throat> willing to um put your time and effort into something i'm sure there's a place we can find that where you're you'll help somebody else. And that's really yeah. what it's about is what can you do to help somebody else? It's, it's a community involvement thing. Community involvement. Support. And I like the fact that if you do, because back in the day it was considered handicapped. Somebody's hand, but, but we don't say, we say handy cam because yeah, uh, yeah they, they always bring something to the table and, and For uh, sure. Yeah. So that's excellent. I hope that somebody out there hears that, that thinks, Hey, bang, why not? That's yeah. terrific. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we, we all have our limitations. Let's be honest. Uh, mine is up here. It's a like, really good memory, <laughs> but I can't remember where I left it half the time. And you know, <laughs> I have that, uh, I have some of those problems that, you know, are really frustrating at times, you know, yeah. what's your name? You know, you know I, I've known you for years and just go blank. And it's like, so we all have that. We, we do. Sometimes, you know, we think we're better than somebody else. And that's not true. You know, we're all the same. You know, we just are different. You know, we're, we're we all have blood in our veins. Yep. And uh, you know, we breathe that same oxygen. And uh, but we each bring something different to the table. And as we do that, we become stronger. You know, it's like it takes somebody who maybe has some physical impairment to say, "Hey, you know, this isn't safe, or this is better. We could do this better." And you never would have thought of that. Nope. Right. Nope. So without that input, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but input from experience, especially. Yep. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, the Civil Air Patrol. I've heard of it in the past. I never gave it much thought. Uh, 
now, you know, with pre-interview, I've, I've, I've looked at some of it, and, and I was blown away by the history of the Civil Air Patrol. And even now, some of the stuff, I've watched some of the videos, and, and any young person or old person or any person, alien hybrids excluded, is look into the Civil Air Patrol is something if you want to do something for community. Just there's a lot of different jobs out there within the Civil Air Patrol. That's there terrific. There I'm, so. I'm um, glad we ran into each other. Yeah, um, I am too. Yeah. And what better place than the uh, Castle Air Museum? Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> and and uh, I'm, I'm hoping uh, one of my road shows is going to be visiting the fabrication shop, but they, uh, I saw the stealth jet was in there. Anyway, they haven't for, let me in there yet. One of these days, I'll have to get in there. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll put some clay on the combination code and share it there with you. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm going to refer to as Major Chris Johnson of the uh, Civil Air Patrol. I want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing this uh, knowledge with us. And uh, I look forward to uh, some other things. And, and maybe in a couple of years, we can check back in with you. Yeah, sure. Or maybe what I'll do is if there's some event that I can uh, oh, that would be sign up bad. for you to, you know, as a public uh, affairs type thing. Uh, let me yeah. keep, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. And we'll yeah, not going basis. anywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, and I right. finished the crown that we got. So, hey, that's terrific. That is very terrific because, again, I like all things they need. It's very good, sir. Thanks for inviting me on there, Dutch. I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate everybody watching the show. So, with that, Chris, let's go enjoy our day. Thank you, sir. See you later. Bye bye now.